Cumberland County's Guardian Ad Litem program needs volunteers to advocate for children who have been abused or neglected and placed in the Department of Social Services custody by a Cumberland County judge. Dwight Torrey, Valerie Haynes, and Christy Kelly tell us how these volunteers help serve as the voice for children in court. The Garden and Lightroom program in this state started in 1983, so we have celebrated our 26th anniversary. And uh, the mission of the program is to provide trained, independent volunteers who can advocate in court for abused and neglected children and work towards uh, finding a permanent, safe home for them in as short a time as possible. And the, the value of our program is tremendous because we have people from the community who can bring their perspective into play in the whole court process. They, um, they come with all of their life experiences and they don't have to have any particular training in advance because our judges want to hear what they think is going to be in the child's best interest. And the um, volunteers do a written court report that is submitted right along with the um, Department of Social Services social workers' reports. And our judges really uh, value that input because these are people who are coming in to help a child to act as a voice for a child. They're not being paid. They're there because of the goodness of their own heart. Guardian ad litem is Latin, and a lot of people wonder, what is that? That um, means guardian for the case. We act as, as a team. Each uh, volunteer has a program supervisor who will help them throughout the whole process of how to go about writing a court report. And then those court reports are submitted through our attorney advocates. We have two attorney advocates for Judge Pone and Judge Dixon's court. And they're the ones who will present the volunteer's position to the judge. This um, volunteer position entails an average of three hours a week because there are many things that you can do from home or from your office, like calling teachers or calling therapists. And of course, it would depend on how many children uh, you were assigned. It starts off in different stages. The first stage is when DSS file a petition with our judges, and once the judge signs his signature on that petition, the guardian ad litem then becomes involved to advocate for that abused or neglected child. Um, how we definitely start off when we receive our appointment order from Judge Kiever, uh, first priority is to go out and visit with that child to make sure that child is in a safe environment, whether it's still in the home or foster care or with a relative. Um, amazing, the puzzle pieces fit together because we talk to the principal of the school, the teachers of the school where the child attends school at, um, therapy if the child is in therapy. Uh, so we talk to a lot of folks that the child is surrounded by in the daily living skills to start the advocate, advocating for the child. The child is less than uh, 11 or 12 years old. Uh, we definitely takes a little bit more research and observing them, what makes them happy, things that they're used to doing. You have to take a different approach when you're advocating for them. That's one of the most important parts of our job and our volunteers. The most important aspect is visiting a child at least once a month or more if necessary. That starts the advocating process in knowing our client and what's going to make them happy. If they're age 12 or older, they have the opportunity to come to court if they want to know what's going on at the appropriate time and speak to the judge as well. And then on top of that, we have what we call a youth court report that they're able to sit down and address you know, their needs, wants, and things that they feel that's going to make them happy to progress. And I'm a strong believer in a year to permanence, as we call it, is trying to get the child in a permanent home within a year. Well, right now we have such a need for uh, volunteers for our program. Cumberland County is actually one of one of the highest rates of child abuse in North Carolina. Um, we are currently serving 577 children from over 300 families with only 100 volunteers. So we are in desperate need of volunteers. In fact, 140 of our children don't even have a volunteer assigned to them right now. Well, you don't need any special uh, 
education background or job education background either, um, we actually will train you and we expect you to have your own life experiences and bring that to our program. Um, we have a 30-hour training program that you would complete, which includes four hours of court observation, as well as shadowing for the supervisor. There's four supervisors in our program, and you would be, as a volunteer, assigned to one of them. For our screening process, we do have a screening process for volunteers, since you are working with children. You need to submit a volunteer application, and that is found online at our website. You will need to complete a background check. If you haven't lived in North Carolina for the past five years, then you need to do a fingerprinting background check and that's at no cost to you. Our volunteers, they act as the voice for the children in court, but in doing so, they help improve our communities. They help improve the children's lives. They help improve the family's lives. It could be your neighbor, it could be your friend, it could be an individual that goes to school with your children. Anyone interested, they can contact our office and once they submit our application, we get the process going and I can let the, whoever our potential volunteers know that our children really appreciate meeting them, speaking with them monthly, and they really look forward to the volunteers that come out and visit with them, getting to know them, building a relationship with them during their case while they are in court.